Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Good morning. So if you sell a haunted object for sale, would you run away screaming or immediately pull out your credit card and select next day shipping? If you chose the latter, you'd be happy to learn that there are whole industries popping up online where people can buy and sell supposedly haunted objects to curious purchasers. On the other hand, if you'd rather run away from haunted objects, then those web pages are definitely not for you. Welcome to the weird world of purchasing haunted objects online from places like eBay and Esty. So if you didn't know, there are many sellers that list curious things that they've acquired in hopes of finding interested purchasers who are equally just as curious. While these online venues are relatively new, exchanging haunted objects in the industry dates back centuries. Long before the internet, people sought out potentially haunted or cursed objects at local marketplaces or shops most cultures have their own versions of paranormal items that many believe may be connected to the spirit world. Hello and welcome back to Lovely Tea TV. Today we're going to talk about Post Malone and all the whispers online about him being haunted by a malicious spirit called the Diviate. So let me take you back to how all this mess started. A man named Jason Haxton won an online auction. But when he received the box in the mail, it came with some unexpected consequences. Jason says that the date arrived, he put his hands on it, and it felt like it collapsed into a liquid state. He soon felt a knife coming into his gut, and he stated that he was paralyzed by pain. And when he went to bed that night, he had terrible dreams of an old hag that seemed to come with the box. Now, Jason said he first heard about the box from a colleague whose roommate had listed it for sale after having all types of bizarre experiences, including hair loss, smelling bad odors, and other things that are sometimes associated with the Diviet box. The owner's box put it on eBay under the title, Diviet Haunted Jewish Wine Cabinet Box. Now, Diviet is an evil spirit in Jewish folklore that's believed to be a soul of a dead person. And once you open the box, that person's soul that had been entrapped in the box can then possess the living. So the person that listed it on eBay stated that they purchased this item in September. Remember that month? in September of 2001 at an Oregon estate sale of a Holocaust survivor who passed away at 103 years old. Liston stated that the lady got the wine cabinet while living in Spain, and it was among one of the few things that she brought to her when she immigrated to America after the war. The woman's granddaughter told the person that growing up, the doors were always shut and that the grandmother placed the wine cabinet out of reach. And the grandmother told all of the grandchildren that it was never to be open. So Jason paid $280 for the box, which instead of it containing wine, it contained a goblet, two locks of hair tied with a string, pennies from the 1920s, a dried rosebud, and a cast iron candlestick holder, and a granite statue engraved with gilded Hebrew letters. Jason said he didn't believe the stories associated with the box, since he's a very science-based person. But then he began experiencing what he calls a tidal wave of bad luck. He says, all I knew is that I got this thing and I got very ill. I didn't know what happened. I still don't know. Eventually, he went to a rabbi and he followed the rabbi's advice to place the wine cabinet in a gold lined wooden container to negate whatever spirit was haunting it. It was posted in the L.A. Times and he eventually put it on eBay and it got thousands of hits. So soon Hollywood came calling and Jason sold the rights to the story in the fall of 2004 to Lionsgate and they released a film produced by Sam Ramey called The Possession in which a family must overcome an evil spirit that inhabits a young girl's body after she buys an antique wooden box at a yard sale. Jason, who's credited as the production consultant on the movie, calls it a conglomerate of all the stories people have told him about this box. Well, after the popularity of the movie, um, the box eventually got sold. So in late 2017, Zach Bagan scored this scary piece of memorabilia to add to his twisted collection. The original Diviet box that inspired the movie Possession was bought by the Ghost Adventure star. 
Now, he did an interview with TMZ, and he said that he bought the wine cabinet that was haunted by the Divya. said that he bought it from the guy who initially lent it to the production of the 2012 movie. So he paid a pretty penny for this box. And soon he decided to keep it in his museum. He has this huge museum in Las Vegas, and it's called the Haunted Museum. And so he had decided back in 2017 that he would have it on display, but that he would never open the box. Now, fast forward to 2018, the rapper Post Malone basically went on to his show called Ghost Adventures, which is hosted by Zach Boggins. And so they decided to go to the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas. And what was so crazy is that Zach goes on to explain the history of the box. He touches it and you can kind of see orbs in the video. And something freaks Post Malone out and Post Malone ends up touching Zach's shoulder, almost like to tell him, come on, let's get out of here. Something doesn't feel right. And all of a sudden you just feel like Post Malone get this crazy shock to his body and they both go running out the room. It's really creepy. Y'all go ahead and check this out. You are a fan of rapper Post Malone. You know, he has not had the best luck lately. And now some believe it's because of something that he did during one of his trips to Las Vegas. <laughs> New video from Zach Baggins shows the rapper inside his haunted museum here in the valley. Now Baggins is seen touching what he calls the most haunted object. The Dybuck box, which is, um, yeah, a box that supposedly has an evil spirit in it. Anyway, okay. then while he's touching that box, Malone is seen touching his shoulder. Baggins says Malone then saw a dark figure that night that followed them out of the museum. Uh -huh. Some people so think happens. this is the reason Post Malone has had so many problems lately. And in all fairness, he kind of has had a bad streak. I just, sure. I got to be honest, his private jet nearly crashed. He got in a car crash and then crooks targeted his home. Oh, no. So, you know, they say bad luck comes in threes. So maybe... That's it. Yeah. And he can move on with his life and never, ever visit the museum again. <laughs> no. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, right. Wow. The, yeah, it's funny when you watch the video how he touches him and it's kind of the chain thing. But he was followed out by the dark object, Yeah, apparently. So. Now, what's even worse is that after that whole situation with the Diviot box, two months after filming, Post Malone was involved in an emergency landing with his private jet. The tires blew out of his jet. And then soon after that, a month later, he was involved in a high-speed car crash where he almost lost his life. And then after that, his, his home was a target of a home invasion where armed intruders broke into his house. It's been a rough few weeks for rapper Post Malone. You may remember just last month, he was on a plane that made an emergency landing here after the tires blew out. Then just this morning in West Hollywood, he was in a car accident. Another car slammed into his Rolls Royce, though he wasn't hurt, not feeling real lucky. He tweeted saying, quote, God must hate me, LOL. Well, let's maybe stay put for the weekend. Yeah, just yeah. stay home. Just chill. <laughs> and it was very frightening because it could have ended really badly. But lucky for him, he wasn't home. In the same time frame, one of his closest friends in the industry, Mac Miller, also died. So a lot of this stuff happened to Post Malone shortly after he was affected by that Divya box. And so a lot of people have been whispering online was this string of bad luck due to him visiting the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas. Now, in 2020, Post Malone once again terrified his fans at a show. He took to his stage to perform, and he legit looked demonically possessed. Several people who attended his runway tour took to social media to post clips of his performance, and people were really curious. They were scared, like, you know, is this due to drugs? Is he high out his mind? Because at that time, he had just dropped a new weed line, but... The way he was performing and moving, he literally looked demonically possessed. It was really creepy watching this video when it went viral back in 2020. Now, I personally, I've always liked Post Malone for the most part. But what I find very interesting about these issues that have been plaguing Post is that in February of 2018, he was spitting some real shit about the government and he was talking about, you know, martial law and the government freezing everybody's credit cards. And what's very interesting is if we fast forward to 2021, that's exactly what happened to the truckers in Canada where their bank accounts and their credit cards were frozen when they went on strike. Well, Post Malone was talking about this in February of 2018. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Biggest lie, yeah, it would have to be the fucking U.S. government, actually. Ooh. Give me it. It, no, I'm serious. 
Um, the biggest lies the U.S. government, um, it's not what it used to be. It used to be so sick and about the people and about freedom and all that shit, but now it's just bullshit. Now it's a fucking reality show, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot of weird shit that happens within our lifetime and within our generation that that really changes the the way of the world. So move somewhere because whenever martial law is declared, you have fucking, or whenever the credit cards fail, whenever you're cards fail whenever your banks fail and you can't use your fucking card anymore you have three days to get out of where you are because that's when they're coming for you that's the big move that's checkmate right there and they think they have you but move out to the country get your scraps stand up for yourself build a tower build a all right so you guys just saw that video so he was saying some real stuff you know, he's talking about people's freedoms and how the government is like a reality TV show. And like I said, that was in February of 2018. Then fast forward to September of 2018, he ends up being invited to go to the Las Vegas Haunted Museum where he ends up touching Zach, who is touching the Diviot box. And then all this stuff happens to Post Malone. All these strings of bad luck happen to him. And I can't help but think like, is it because he was speaking so much truth seven months earlier that seven months later, he ends up, you know, getting this spirit of bad luck just casted onto him. It's very frightening when you think about it. Now, in 2021, Post Malone finally came out and he spoke about, you know, this so-called curse around him and, you know, what he's been going through because of this haunted Diviot box. So he went on to the late night show with Steph Myers where they discussed it and he discussed all the creepy things that happened to him shortly after being introduced to this Diviot box. Go ahead and check this out. Skeptic, but are you someone who, I know you were on Ghost Hunters, and was that an experience that made you, uh, do, is your belief in ghosts stronger after doing that? Yeah, I think, you know, after going on, um, uh, you know, going hunting with Zach and everything and, and all that stuff, and we stayed at his museum in Vegas. Uh, I love you, Zach. Uh, text me. Um, but, and so is you Zach, know, Zach gets a spot in the bunk room? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, Zach, Zach Bagans <laughs> is definitely in here because if we need to fight off any demons or anything after the apocalypse, there's going to be a whole bunch of them running around. So, But, you know, it's, it's, it's weird because after we opened up this creepy, creepy Dybbuk box, I had gotten a car accident. I got in, like, almost had a plane wreck. My house got broken into, all that type of stuff. But it was just within a month's time. It was really, really odd stuff. But I've always had, like, you know, an interest in that and have had experience at my friend's house. Now, fast forward to September. Once again, remember that month, September 18th. This was just a few days ago. And Post Malone took a horrible fall on stage where he ended up bruising his rib, which is extremely scary because if he would have broke a rib, that rib could have punctured his lung and he could have died on stage. He took a horrible tumble on Saturday night. But Post Malone is a trooper. He got up, he apologized, and he even went back to performing before being led to the hospital. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So still kind of processing what happened tonight, but one thing I know for sure is that we don't deserve Post Malone. We don't. Went to his show in St. Louis tonight. He was so good. Makes it through 12 songs on his set list. He's in circles. And as he's walking across the stage, he falls. All you saw with him hit the floor really, really hard. I've been going to concerts for 30 years. I've never seen anyone get that hurt on stage. What you can see in the video now is that there was some kind of stage malfunction. There was a hole that he tripped in. Unless you were in the first couple rows, you couldn't see that. Everyone in that venue grasped how serious this was immediately. Security was escorting his panicked family members up onto the stage. He was too hurt to even get off the stage. They had to tend to him right there. It was, after about eight to 10 minutes, they were able to get him up and help him off stage. 
And then it was all just kind of a quiet, eerie thing. I think we were all just waiting for somebody to come back out and tell us that he couldn't finish the show. Here's what happened instead. Post Malone came hobbling the fuck back out there, apologized to the crowd for ruining the show four times, felt so bad he started to cry. And then someone hands him a beer, he takes a big swig of it, and he finishes his fucking set list. I fucking love you guys so much. Thanks for being in there, man. I didn't think I could love that man anymore than I did going into that show tonight, and I was wrong. Post, we love you. It was so hard to see you hurt, but we're glad you're okay. Get some rest. You are a rock star for sure. All right, so you guys just saw that video, and I, for one, am really glad that Post Malone is okay because that entire situation was frightening. You could tell it was unexpected. He did not expect that hole to be there, and he was hurt really bad, and for him to continue on and to cry and to apologize for an accident that you know nobody could have predicted, it just shows his character, and I understand why he has such a huge fan base. People really love Post Malone. So I leave the question with you all. Do you guys think that this Diviot box had something to do with all of these unfortunate accidents and incidences? that have gone on around Post Malone's life. How do you guys feel about this and the fact that he was speaking so much truth a few months before he was introduced to the box and ever since then he's kind of been a shell of himself in a way? So go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Feel free to share the video. And most importantly, please make sure that you're still subscribed to this channel because YouTube loves unsubscribing people. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.